Okay, so we're calling this improvisation for the terrified. Okay, this is kind of us playing around with the idea of using improvisation in lessons. Yeah. And there's sort of two reasons why we want to do this. First of all, I meet a lot of professional classical musicians who are the most amazingly talented players on violins and flutes and pianos and everything. But as soon as you ask them to improvise, they just freeze in terror because they're just not used to doing it. They've been given the dots. If no one's telling them what to play, yeah. they kind of can't cope. And I think that's really sad. Yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah, that is really sad because improvisation is, uh, for me, is one of the things that I do quite a lot of. So I think it's where the creativity of music yeah. is. It's a creative, expressive yeah. thing. And you can express yourself through someone else's notes. Yes, of course. There's this real expression and creativity that comes from it being your own notes, being yeah. something that you've written. Definitely another string to your bow. Um, and the second reason that we're kind of thinking of about this is because you do, when for us, Key Stage 2 primary, primary school lessons, there are a lot of improvisation lessons which are, are fine, are great, but do descend into the kind of soundscape. It's, it's the soundscape. It's the let's do rain noises and let's do, and that's fine. It's got its it's place and it's brilliant. But it's very free improvisation, and we want children, we want anyone learning to be playing the sort of thing that they want to listen to. Yeah. Um, and very few people sit down to listen to a soundscape. Yeah. They? There's not much self-expression yeah. through the rain. <laughs> okay. So. We're just going to throw down a few ideas, some lessons that we use, some tricks that we use, um, and see how you get on with them. Yeah, and the other thing, just to, just to sort of caveat this, the first, I like to think of this improvisation as composition sped up, and composition is improvisation slowed right down with an editorial process. Yeah, the, the, the difference is that editorial, you can go back yeah. and change I it. I don't know that note, I'm gonna change that note. Yeah, that, absolutely. that sounds much better. Or I'll shift that there and it'll work this. This will create this cadence or yeah. whatever. Okay, so here are three things w that we use in improvisation. They are sequential, but we definitely wouldn't there is, recommend. There is a big jump somewhere. You'll see where the big jump is. You'll see the big jump. So, we're gonna start very, very simple. And the most important thing about improvisation is rhythm. Yeah. Okay. It's good to play the right notes, but at the same time, you've got to get that rhythm right. So we're going to start with single note. We're going to start with just one single note, and we're going to focus entirely on rhythm. So we're going to pick a C, which for ukulele is fine. Obviously, you could do this on any instrument. We've yeah. chosen C if you're a piano, C is the obvious note to go, or a glockenspiel or whatever you're using. Doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to use C, and we're just going to play a rhythm. So I'm going to start, we're going to use Kadai rhythm syllables. Yeah. If you don't use those, you want tea, coffee, whatever you want to say, it's fine. We're going to go with ta, ta, te, te, ta, like that. Yeah, and then we're going to, actually, we're going to pick three rhythms. We're going to have three <laughs> Sorry, different I've rhythms. There, he's, he's moved. Yeah. We're going to have three different rhythms. We're going to use ta, ta, te, te, ta. We're going to use ta, 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 ta. And then we're going to use one with the rest, with ta, ta, rest, ta. And they're going to be our three choices of rhythms. So at the moment, all our improvisation is, is our choice to play whatever rhythm we want to play. And Absolutely. That is a valid way of And that is fine. You are improvising because you are picking from a list, but you are picking on the spot. You're yeah. picking at that moment. And if we use improvisation, the analogy I always use is, we can all improvise, we do it every day, because that's how you speak. Now, if somebody asks, to, asks you, what's your favourite colour, you don't invent a new language to reply to that question, you use grammatical. Yeah, you rules use a word from a list, don't you? You pick yeah. from the dictionary. You pick your word. Yes. So it's the same thing. We're just choosing off a list what we're going to play. So we're going to do this as a sort of trading fours type back and forth, back and forth thing. So I'm going to play either ta 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 rest ta or ta ta te te ta, and then Phil's going to answer me back. Yes. So we're With go, one of the same rhythms. Absolutely. So I'm going to go. Do you know what, you might find that with a class, actually. You might find if you do this with a whole class of like 30 children, every single one of them will pick the same rhythm. Yeah. And to start with, that's fine. That's, that's fine. fairly normal. That's just following the crowd. They don't want to stand there. And obviously you can do this as a teacher 
class type situation or you can do it as groups you could do it as half the class do one you know pick the rhythm do the call and half the up do the response so you've still got these three rhythms and everybody's then picking and that escapes that oh i've got to improvise terrified i'm on my own what am i going to do because a lot of improvisation does happen with a kind of right you're going to improvise then you're going to improvise and we do it like that but with this way nobody gets that yeah, you're right. Just in, just in pairs, you're kind of surrounded by other yeah, people, Yeah, that's fine. So those are, are our three of them picking from a list. Now, we've got a blog post on our website, www.theukuleleschool.com, which explains what we've just talked about there. Yeah, and you'll see details. those rhythms written those rhythms out right if you want to see what they look like, uh, and just to help you. Now, moving on to lesson two. Yeah. So this is the same idea, but we're going to adapt it slightly, and we're going to try and change those rhythms. Yes. Now, these are my three key rules to improvising with rhythms. Okay, if I've got a rhythm to start with, and I want to change that rhythm, there are three basic things I can do. I can either add a note, take a note away, or move a note. Now, move a note's a bit more complicated because that's going to be changing note. So we're to, for now, we're going to just stick to add a note or take a note away. Yeah. So I've got my C, I've got my Ta, 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 ta rhythm. Yeah. Now I could take a note away or add a note, and that actually would give me my two rhythms I've got already. Yes. I could add a note to ta, 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 or I could take a note away to ta, ta, rest, ta. Okay, I could change that in other ways though. I could take away the first note instead. I could go rest, ta, 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 or ta, rest, ta, ta. Yeah. Or I could add a note somewhere else. So we're just going to double it up into a tete. We're just going to change the crotchet yes, to a way yeah. So we could go ta 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 ta. Yeah, and obviously you can take this further and you can start putting in semiquavers and yeah, you know, syncopations and stuff. But this one's quite nice because we can actually do it at the same time. Yes. If we both start with that ta 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 rhythm, actually. Yeah. Let's start with that one. And we get a 20th, 20th yeah. century. We do, we get a very sort of minimalist type thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with that rhythm and then when I count to four, you're going to make your change. Wow. So you're going to either take a note away or add a note. note. And then, fun. actually, I'm going to count to four again, and we're going to change it again, and we're going to get two steps away wow. from this. Wow. So, let's try it. So, so we're, we're going to start the same rhythm We're going to go, ta, 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 And when I say change, you're going to either add a note or take a note away. And one, two, three, and change. with these kind of rhythms that fit in and out of each other and that's really nice because you can do that as a whole group yeah. however big your group is whether it's a small group or a whole class or even just a paired one-to-one -one lesson with the teacher you can you can kind of do that as a group thing so you're feeding off each other yeah um, and if you find that some of your students are adding loads of notes at once yeah. or taking loads of notes away at once it just doesn't stop it. matter as long as they're being creative and yeah. changing in their way then that's absolutely fine yeah it's obviously nice. as you get better at it the, the sort of intricacies of changing just a little bit of that rhythm will, will be better but if you find that students are taking off the first bit and it's suddenly just rest rest tete -tete -tete, it's fine it doesn't matter it's it's what you're doing is changing the rhythm and manipulating that music and that's what we're interested in when we're improvising yeah absolutely Sh shall we move on to the next one yes yeah, so no. the next one is our jump forward yeah don't assume that this is the next lesson this is the next it really step. isn't once you've done that this is where you go no this is this is this is better if you're you if you're working with a group that's really comfortable with the idea of improvising. Maybe if you've got like a school jazz band or something yes. like that, or yeah. a student who really wants to learn jazz or yeah. or whatever sort of rock improvisation. If you've got someone who really wants to be kind of up in terms of being able to play solos. Yeah, sometimes. this is. I mean, this, this is, is also something. Time. All of that rhythm that we've talked about is also another way of. I've whenever I teach scales, my my thing about scales is that. Once you've learnt the notes up and down, and you've got the technical facility of them, unless as a warm up, that's pretty much all you're getting from it then. So I'm very, very quickly, whenever I do scales, start talking about, right, let's do a different rhythm, let's change yeah. this up, let's do this up and down. 
Um, and so this sort of this way kind of makes you think if they've got the scale sorted out already. So this is quite advanced. Not so ridiculously, but... We're going to work on what we call chord tones. Yeah. Now, basically, that means if I play a C major chord, I'm sure most of you will be aware that that is the notes C, E and G played at the same time. Yeah. Now, as long as I'm playing a C, C. an E or a G over that chord, that's going to sound, nice. sound great. So while I'm playing a C, an E or a G, Phil can play a C, an E or a G over the top of that. Now, obviously... On a chordal instrument, this is really easy, you just play any of, you can form the chord, if it was a guitar or if a piano, you can form the chord and just go, well I'll play one of those notes, and I'll know they're the chord, so it's fine. Um, we're going to do, we're going to be very specific on the ukulele now, and this is going to give us a selection of notes, which might not seem as, as logical if you were doing it on the piano. So um, we're going to start with a C chord, and that gives us our C note. Now, essentially, what we're going to do is play the note that is on the A string yeah, so for every one of our This string chords. at the bottom of the A string, whichever note that your finger happens to be on when or you make that chord shape, that's going to be your yeah. note. So on the C chord, we get a C, because that's that note there. When we change to an F, it's an open A, A no finger. Open. When we change to a G, it's the B there. So the chord tones, if you like, are going to be C for the C chord, an A for the F chord, and a B for the G chord. Which works quite nicely because that's actually a C chord. Yeah, so that's a nice little C chord. You've got three don't. notes in, in a lot. There's a nice little melodic sound to that already. So first step, I c we're just going to play one note for each chord. So I'm going to strum a C, Phil's going to play that C. Yeah. Three, two, one. Then it's going to change to F. Two, three, four. Then it's going to change to G. Two, three, four. So that's simple. I played C, A, then B. Now if I've got a chord pattern that's kind of working, so I've got C, F, G. I can just now put over that. that I can see there, so I, G. Oh, I've got that G. It's very hot in the UK. Though. C. F. G. C. Okay, so obviously I'm just playing the notes there. And what's really nice about this is I'm listening for the chord changes, I'm thinking about what notes I'm going to play, I'm trying to internalise that sound into my ears. And then he stayed on C that time. So I'm just trying to catch you out. He's just trying to catch you out. Instead of talking. Yeah, no, I would. So um, what we can do now is just do. Do all of that rhythmical stuff. So now what I'm doing is thinking rhythm and also. And also changing the note. changed it completely but use that idea just through my improvisation so that's I mean that's quite a lot of plates spinning in the air and it's certainly not something that I expect the second week of a primary school lesson you'd want to be well, doing. What you've but got there is quite a nice sounding melody it's yeah. not you know over the top up and down scales no. jazz improvisation but is use of improvisation to create a reasonably very nice melodic sounding nice melody. Yeah and the next step is obviously you start adding the all the notes in the scale. Yes, yeah, so and then some chromatics and it. Yeah. We've already got a blog post up about improvising yeah. that uses some of the more simple ideas. We are thinking about maybe doing an ebook, an ebook, so reasonably of affordable lessons. ebook yeah. on this, with maybe ten lessons, something like that. Yeah, with backing tracks. Just um, 
different levels of lessons. So you've got the very simple ones that are just rhythm all the way up to ones that are using yeah. scales and things like that later on that you can kind of dip in and out yeah. of and use in different places in lessons. So we're thinking about doing that. If that's something you'd be interested in, comment then, below. Yeah, comment below or come over to the ukuleleschool.com and join the mailing list and we'll be able to keep yes. you up to date with yeah. how that sort of thing is going. And I'm sure all of you have been shouting at the screen saying, I will I, what about this? You've completely forgotten about the way that we do improvisation. So please, we want to hear from you. Yeah, again, um, comment. Comment underneath and um, tell us the best way that you do We've got our group as well where there's not a yeah. lot of discussion going on at the minute, so it'd be quite nice to get some people talking um, and seeing what's going on there. So yeah, please come and kind of get involved and join up and, and kind of... Yeah, join the whole discussion and see if you can use some improvisation. Yes.